Hi guys, today I am going to review Bharat Dynamics Limited. Bharat Dynamics Limited is the sole manufacturer of gated missiles for India. So, uh, Bharat Dynamics was established in 1970s to meet uh, manufacturing of missiles or gated missiles for Indian Defense Services. It was actually created by drawing a pool of engineers from ordnance factory. It, uh, it was created as a agency for creating guided missiles. So it has four manufacturing units until now, out of which uh, three are located in uh, Telangana Street at Hyderabad, Banur and uh, Ibrahim Patanam. And one is at uh, Andhra Pradesh, which is at uh, Vishagapatnam. Another one is at Amravati, Maharashtra, which is coming up. And uh, the tagline of Bharat Dynamics is the force behind peace, which actually tells the technology uh, uh, technology that uh, keeps us in peace. Then uh, it is the milestone of Bharat Dynamics Limited. It was established in uh, 1970s under Ministry of Defense. And in 1971, st they started producing first generation anti tank gated missile, which was French SS 11B1 missile uh, with the license agreement with the uh, Eros Patel, which is a French uh, missile manufacturing company. Then in 1983, there was a program of Indian government called the Integrated Gated Missile Development Program. Uh, this program was actually aimed at to achieve self-sufficiency of production of ballistic and other missiles for India. And uh, uh, through this program only, India started uh, achieving self-sufficiency in uh, ballistic missile by producing missiles like uh, Prithvi, Agni and other series of missiles. In 1985, BDL started production of second generation of anti-tank gated missiles. 1988, uh, they started uh, manufacturing Prithvi missile, which is India's first state-of-art surface-to-surface missile. And in 1998, Agni series missile started in production for BDL, starting with Agni uh, 1. Uh, 2001 they started uh, producing lightweight torpedoes 2007 they started uh, production of anti torpedo decoy system 2008 they started production of uh, heavyweight torpedo and long range uh, other long range surface to air missile then 2015 they handed over agash weapon system which is a defense weapon system to indian army 2017 and 2019 they handed over barrack system to navy and air force as well barrack system is also it's a defense system so in in all the missiles manufactured by uh, Bharat dynamics there was always uh, it was uh, mostly it was designed and developed by drdu or other agencies and it is manufactured by BDL but there are also other missiles uh, which has been actually designed and developed by uh, BDL so let's go little about uh, learning about uh, integrated gated missile development program so these are the missiles uh, which actually manufactured uh, manufactured or designed and developed under integrated gated missile development program it started with Prithi and uh, the the latest uh, or the highest uh, range it ends at Agni uh, which is which has an intermediate to intercontinental range so Prithi was a short range surface to surface uh, ballistic missile and Agni is a intermediate range to intercontinental uh, surface to surface missile and then there is Agash missile, which is a surface to air missile. Then there is Nag, which is a anti tank fire and forget missile. Trishul, which is also a surface to air missile, which is also short range. Let's discuss about products of uh, BDL. Uh, first one is ballistic missiles. 
it has uh, it produces ballistic missiles uh, uh, prithi missiles and agni series ballistic missiles prithi missiles it was the first missile produced uh, under uh, integrated uh, uh, gated missile development program it's a short range missile it has three versions prithi 1 prithi 2 prithi 3 uh, first version used by army 150 it has a range of 150 km and uh, 1000 kg payload for the second it has a, a range of 350 km and uh, 500 kg range uh, 500 kg payload and for the third used by navy it has a, a range of 350 km and 1000 kg payload then there is dhanush missile which has been um, a modified version of prithvi missile uh, developed uh, for navy it has a range of 350 km and it has a stabilization features which is required for navy uh then there is agni series ballistic missile these are medium to intercontinental range of ballistic missile developed by india so range of uh, agni 1 goes from 700 km to 1200 km and agni 5 has a range of 5000 to 8000 km agni 1 to agni 5 is in operations uh and agni 6 which is under development it has an intercontinental range of uh, 11000 km to 12000 km and uh, both prithvi and uh, uh, agni series are battlefield weapon with nuclear capabilities then there is uh, five kinds of anti tank guided missiles developed uh, produced by uh, bdl first one is man portable atgm uh, this is man portable and it is used by infantry and uh, parachute uh, or special forces of indian army and it is u- used against uh, against tanks and armored vehicles then there is amoga third atgm this is third generation fire and forget uh, anti tank guided missile Uh, this is developed in house by uh, r&d division of bdl uh, this is also man portable then there is nag atgm this is a mechanized infantry atgm it's used by indian forces to uh, destroy armored vehicle with explosive reactive armor it has a range of 4 km then uh, helena it is an another version of nag atgm itself but the only difference is that it is it can be released from helicopter it acts like air to surface missile then there is milan 2t this is also man portable atgm uh, it's uh, it's also have the same functions but the the main difference is it is highly reliable and uh, it requires no maintenance or pre fire checkups it's also exported uh, as well then there is concur m uh, which is second generation and it is indigenously developed uh, mechanized infantry atgm so one thing unique about uh, concur is that the indigenization percentage of concur is around 96 percentage which is the highest among other atgms uh it's also used for the same purposes uh, to target armored vehicles or tanks uh can be targeted for moving and stationary objects and it has the highest hit probability as well then there is weapons uh manufactured for navy uh, navy and army as well so mostly on the sea so the first one is lightweight torpedo it's an underwater weapon which can be released from a ship or helicopter to hit an underwater target it's used by indian army and indian navy it's exported as well then there is heavy weight torpedo or vatnastra it's an advanced ship launched or submarine launched heavy weight uh, anti submarine torpedo which is capable of targeting uh, submarines in shallow or deep waters it's used by uh, indian defense force as a remote control guidance system so uh the good thing about uh, vernastra is it has its own intelligence system in order to uh, deviate as well it's also exported then there is anti submarine warfare suit uh it's a warfare suit uh, used by navy 
for integrating systems uh, like torpedo torpedo defense system and uh, submarine uh, fire decoy everything so it's used to defend against opponent submarine attacks this is also exported then there is submarine fire decoy this is fired by indian navy to confuse or uh, uh, deviate opponent's torpedo uh, just like mimicking uh, target ship so it has zero response time for launching these are weapon systems uh, developed developed and uh, uh, produced by bdl so in weapon systems first one is agash weapon system agash weapon system it's a, a surface to air defense system it's a medium range surface to air uh, missile system designed for air defense of uh, it's mainly used for air defense so the system has long range uh, surveillance radar target and uh, missile tracking radar troop control centers and launches then the same thing uh, uh, another si uh, kind of air uh, air defense system is medium range surface to air, to air missile system or barrack system uh, which was created uh, in cooperation with israeli firm so it's a high response quick reaction vertically launched supersonic uh, missiles it is used to neutralize enemy aerial targets which is which can be missiles aircraft and guided bombs then there is air to air missile system which is astra weapon system uh, this is used by indian defense force to defend against air attacks so it consists of astra missile and launcher uh, it can be uh, used for beyond visual range targets then there is counter measured dispensing system uh this is like a dispensing system uh to confuse the opponent uh, aircraft uh, against uh, uh, radars which which would be seeking infrared uh, infrared uh, infrared signals from opponent's uh, aircrafts so when these systems are released into air the uh, the enemy aircraft cannot actually uh, pinpoint the in uh, our aircrafts so the means uh, it's also a different uh, air defense system kind of then there is uh, a weapon called invar this is a mechanized inventive weapon which can be fired from uh, gun barrel of t90 tanks which is a russian uh, but uh, russian tank uh, which is under production by indian firm so uh, this is an explosive reactive armor there are uh, different versions uh, versions of invar is available then there is uh, uh, smart anti airfield weapon it's used for uh, precision surface to uh, air to surface weapon it's uh, it has a high precision up to range of uh, 100 kilometers uh, the difference between normal bombs and uh, smart anti airfield weapon is that it's uh, insensitive towards environmental conditions and the the precision it has a high precision that uh, that can be precisely hit at the intended intended target so let me go on to some interesting facts about bdl bdl is a sole manufacturer in india to manufacture torpedoes and and anti tank guided missiles as well as uh, surface to air missile as well but there is another firms like uh, uh, brahmos uh, which also manufactures surface to air missiles and if you see it has an order book of around 8000 uh 100 crews in j until january 21st and it expects order book of uh, 1300 uh, 13000 crews in near future it uh, the if you if you see the recent orders for uh, bdl you uh, you can see concourse m80 gm for 633 crews and uh, there is a contract for 1188 crews 
for supply of heavy weight uh, torpedoes to Indian Navy. Then there is a export order signed for lightweight torpedo to a friendly country. Uh, it export order uh, it is for the supply of two ship sets of uh, lightweight torpedo and associated equipment. The total value of contract is around uh, 14.33 million and it was expected to execute it, expected to execute uh, within 2020-21. Uh, if you see the future high value orders for BDL that includes uh, systems like Agash for 3rd and 4th Regiment, Agash for Indian Air Force and MRSAM which is Barrack System for Indian Air Force Milan 2T uh, ATGM then uh, then other another orders during financial year 2019-2020 uh, BDL has registered export value of 174 crores and uh, if you see the R&D expenditure of uh, BDL it it spends around 2.39 percentage of total sales turnover for R&D, uh, which is not high when you compare with another uh, defense organization like BEL, uh, Hindustan Aeronautical Limited, or uh, even uh, BHEL. BHEL has the highest uh, R&D spending among PSUs. Uh, as of March 2020, the company has 2,950 employees working for them. Uh, if you see the new initiative of BDL, they have started a uh, center of excellence for artificial intelligence in order to develop uh, uh, products in uh, missiles, uh, in, in, manuf uh, in manufacturing missiles and other uh, ammunition. So, uh, this is this act like an artificial intelligence laboratory for BDL. So uh, this will this will uh, develop, this will undertake up to five projects in any year for creation of separate business units for BDL. Uh, in the areas in which they will operate is like seekers and missiles, solar power system, unmanned system, and energy storage products. Then the, uh, they have an understanding with the uh, Telangana government to produce, uh, to create a uh, defense startup ecosystem. This is uh, Telangana hub for developing startup companies in uh, defense related pro products. If you see uh, the future projects or future ventures in which uh, BDL uh, would venture in future, they have signed MOU with uh, Roxel Fans for establishment of a uh, propulsion system in India. MOU signed with Javelin Joint Venture for joint marketing and production of Javelin missiles in India. Then uh, Almasi and T Russian company for refurbishment and of all missiles of Russian uh, missile available with the Indian uh, Indian forces. Then they also signed MOU with IAT Kanpur for joint development of manufacturing of UAVs and uh, LOTOT agreement with uh, uh, Hemral Pune for transfer of t technology for IR fly flyers of CMDS which is uh, I have discussed in products itself about CMDS. Let's see about the, the promoter stay, uh, the shareholding pattern. There is no share pledge. So in June 2018, the promoters had around 87.75 percentage in BDL. Later, uh, that's promoters are basically Indian government or president of India. Uh, the president, the Indian government actually diluted the shares from 87.75 to 74.93 in uh, March 2021. Uh, FIA's actually reduced stake in uh, BDL. D, but if you see mutual funds actually uh, increase their stake in, they actually more than double. 
more than triple their stake in uh, BDL and public shareholding also gone up slightly. If you see the uh, the mutual funds shareholding gone up in uh, BDL is a positive s signal and uh, but uh, if you consider uh, Indian government diluting shares in BDL it's not that positive because it is a strategic asset. Then let's see about financial analysis of uh, Barras Dynamics Limited. It has a market capitalization of uh, 6,614 crores. It can be considered as a mid-cap firm. And no, it's a, it's still a small cap firm. And uh, the current price of uh, share is 361 rupees. Uh, which has a book value per share of 137 which means that it has a price to book value of 2.64 times so it's uh, yeah, the the share price is actually 2.64 times the book value of BDL then it has gone up uh, the share price has gone up to 482 rupees within last year and uh, gone as low as 232 rupees in last year if you see the stock uh, price to earning ratio uh, when you compare with the industry price to earning ratio it has the same uh, price to earning ratio look at the dividend yield it has given a, a decent dividend yield of 2.44 percentage ROC is so high at 30.6 percentage. ROE is also high at 21.9 uh, uh, percentage. It has a face value of 10, uh, which means that in future we can expect uh, sh uh, stock splits. And in uh, recent year, recent year or uh, the ongoing year, they had a sales of 2,203 crores with a proper operating margin of 17.2 percentage, which is high actually, with a profit pat of 307 crores. Uh, the sales in this quarter had been 459 crores with a pat of 49.2 crores. Uh, if you see the sales growth in three years, it's negative 14.1 percentage. Negative 14.1 percentage means that the firm actually uh, made a degrowth in sales, which is not good for BDL. And if you see the profit growth also uh, for the last three years, only near to one percentage, which is also very low. And uh, that's it so let's see the total revenue to profit after tax values of uh, BDL uh, from 2015 to 2018 the, the total revenue has been gone up until 2017 from 2017 onwards revenue has been going down from 4887 to, to uh, the revenues has actually halved in uh, halved in 2020 and uh, uh, 12 trailing uh, 12 tra uh, trailing months so it's not good for BDL if you see the the profits but when you compare the profits even though revenues has uh, decreased still the profits remains uh, nearly same see uh, it has a profit of uh, when uh, 2841 it has a profit of uh, 644 over uh, here also it has a profit of 803 and here also profit has in has in gone down which is very uh, good for the firm uh, previously also in the financial snapshot i have said the company is roc and uh, the profitability net profit margin is very high let's see the cagr sales and profit ratios uh, in 10 uh, 5 years it has a sales growth of only 2 percentage 
which is not um, not at all attractive uh, in, within three years it has a negative uh, 14 percentage sales growth which is uh, negative for the firm and uh, 12, uh, trailing 12 months also it has a negative 13 percentage growth which is not uh, ideal and if you see compounded profit growth also uh, five years uh, it has only four percentage growth three years only one percentage uh, which are not good for the firm and if you see the TTM which is of, uh, because of corona and other factors it has grown degrowth in profit but in spite of uh, having degrowth in uh, sales and profit growth they still have net profit margin at 13.9% uh, which is very high so the firm is still attractive on uh, net profit if you see uh, Bharat Dynamics Limited always the EBITDA margin of uh, Bharat Dynamics Limited is very high uh, in 2012, 2013 and so on see the EBITDA margin of 41% which is uh, very high for, uh, for any firm in India and uh, uh, even in March 2020 the EBITDA margins is very high for the firm so average EBITDA margin uh, within 7 years it is around 23% which is very high let's see about uh, the profit and loss statement The, the let's see the operating margins 10 percentage 13 percentage 15 percentage the operating margins has actually improved over years from 10 percentage it has improved to 24 percentage uh, very recently March uh, 20 financial year only uh, because of corona uh, covid related issues uh, the profit margin has come down in to uh, trailing 12 months still it's ideal uh, so if you see everything uh, this operating margin and uh, how the firm uh, makes more profit is attractive and see the dividend payout the the firm actually pays out decent dividends over the years uh, because it's a PSU always you can expect that decent uh, dividend will be paid see the ROC guys so from 2010 it has only ROC of 7.64 it jumped to 41.92 in 2011-2012 over the years ROC has come down but still firm is uh, uh, firm has been doing a remarkable uh, uh, job of uh, increasing uh, uh, the the equity wealth and depth wealth of the shareholders and ROE also same thing uh, the return on uh, equity also very high over the years from 2011 tall it jumped to 30, 32.08 uh, 32 but over the years it has decreased down but still it is very attractive uh, see the ROE it was only 1.26 percentage over years yeah, the the firm has actually increased their uh, um, competitiveness over years uh, by utilizing m most of its ass assets uh, uh, the uh, the, co uh, the company was able to make more returns out of its assets uh, by reaching around 9.4 percentage let's see risk factors about uh, bdl it has a uh, bank loan of uh, 410 crores, which is a long term loan. So it has a uh, credit rating of Crystal A1 positive, which is currently negative reaffirmed. It was it was stable reaffirmed before. The the changes in uh, credit rating was because uh, of COVID and. Uh, uh the disruptions actually affected the company in order to uh, in in supply side so 
the that has actually affected but the company is still can be called as debt free because it has around uh, cash and bank balance of more than 763 crores as of september 30 2020 so company is in liquidity position company is in ideal position so there is no need to discuss about uh, debt to equity ratio and interest coverage ratio as well if you see the uh, business risk the main risk business risk about bdl is uh, it has dependent on single major customer which is uh, ministry of defense and uh, so it has no control over the sales it can make uh within a year or within two years so uh and there is also small percentage of export it has when you compare with another uh, defense firms like uh, hal or uh, bel it has enough uh, it has other diversified income from uh, uh, civilian products or uh, airport services or mro services in in terms of hal and so on but in terms of bdl it's a, a defense focus firm so uh, risks also more concentrated it has a wide, high working capital intensity so like all uh, defense firm long gestation period for orders to execute then foreign uh, risk forex risk uh, forex risks are there which is from uh, because mostly bdl also procures from foreign oems Uh, original equipment manufactures for production so it, uh, if there is a forex difference it also affects and there is technology uh, risk due to obsolescence only thing uh, the company is doing company is investing more into r&t then let's discuss about a uh, valuation part about bdl uh if you see over the years the book value has been increased but in 2018 the book value has reduced to 106 uh, which i guess uh, in 2018 only bdl uh, was actually listed in uh, stock market and there was more dilution of shares so it might be the reason for uh, uh, dilution of uh, book value for bdl but over years uh, over four years the book value has actually improved and if you see price to uh, price to book value uh, per share it's 1.3 2.3 3.7 and 2.64 so the stock is getting expensive uh, recently from 3.7 it has come down to 2.64 but still the stock is uh, getting expensive let's see uh, some strength and weakness which is part of sort analysis so it is the stocks where mutual funds and uh, foreign institutional investors increase stake for uh, actually foreign institutional in, uh, investors actually decrease stake there is uh, rising net cash flow rising net profit with net profit margin quarter of quarter uh, increase in quarterly net profit with net profit margin year on year company with low debt increase in revenue every quarter for last two quarters increase in revenue for every quarter for last two quarters and company was able to generate net cash flow for last two years uh, which is very important and book value improving per year there is zero promoter uh, pledge and if you see the weakness of uh, bdl the roc has been declining in last two years i have discussed but roc is still high and there was a degrowth in revenue and profit uh, which is a concern i have discussed in previous slides as well and there is decline in quarterly net profit year on year Uh, that's mainly due to uh, covid related interruptions sorry disruptions and there is falling quarterly revenue and net profit year on when you uh, in peer comparison we actually have to compare bdl with uh, hindustan aeronautics and uh, bel uh, which is bharat electrical limited uh, out of which we can 
have Hindustan Aeronautics Limited over here. If you see the P, P ratio, uh, it has a P ratio of 21.45, but Hindustan Aeronautical have a P ratio of 12.34 only. So Hindustan Aeronautical is uh, more attractive. Dividend yield also Hindustan Aeronautical actually gives him more. Uh, quarter uh, profit ratio also Hindustan Aeronauticals actually have uh, profitability ways Hindustan Aeronautical is better. And uh, quarter sales percentage also it's uh, around 21.78 which is higher than uh, uh, BDL at minus 9.7 percentage. See the quarter profit uh, uh, margin. It is 85.27 with Hindustan Aeronauticals. Only minus 7.50 for Bath Dynamics. So it's not attractive actually. Mm, as uh, concerned with Bar Hindustan Aeronautical. But if you see the ROCE. Hindustan Aeronautical has only ROC of 23.91 percentage. At the same time, Bharat Dynamics has an ROC of 30.56 because Bharat Dynamics has less debt, only 8.25 crores. At the same time, uh, Hindustan Aeronautical has a debt of 4,332 crores. So, uh, when you compare with peers, the company has a revenue problem. Company has a revenue problem means every year revenue is getting uh, decreased. But company is very efficient in terms of getting profits and uh, increasing profit margins and so on. If you see, uh, currently it is trading around uh, uh, 359.30 uh, rupees. Uh, it's, it's a, around the same level as in 2019 where it was trading around 349.45 rupees. So it's at around the same range. It gone up as high as 450, uh, 480 in, uh, in near to August 2020. So it has actually reduced 25 percentage from its uh, 52 week high. So in the end, let me give you my insights. It's available at 359.30 uh, uh, rupees and it has a fair PE value of uh, 21 when you compare with the PE value of 22, a fair price to book value at 2.64. It indicates that the stock is at buyable levels. And it has a fall from uh, a 25 percentage fall from 52 week high. So if you see the uh, my insight, whether you, uh, uh, it's a good company. It has a good management and uh, industry's best net profit margin and uh, ROC has been high for the firm. Uh, so the company is uh, actually effi very efficiently managed. But the problem with the company is it's fully defense firm, firm and it has only single major customer which is uh, Ministry of Defense. If the, if the sales from Ministry of Defense actually reduces, the company also suffers. So, yeah, and it doesn't have a diversified uh, revenues just like its peers like HAL or BEL. Uh, but it has only uh, rising revenue in terms of exports. So this is a stock which is ideal for an investor, which uh, uh, investor who wants a diversified portfolio and uh, uh, a major defense, only defense focused company. So it's an ideal company and it has also major projects coming up in future so that a uh, company will have more diversified income and so on. So I suggest that investors can still buy the shares. Only risk is single major customer. So last, uh, I'm not a, uh, it's a disclaimer. I'm not a uh, appropriately licensed portfolio manager. Uh, guys, uh, take your own decision before investing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And uh, 
give me some feedback about the video how can i do uh, do it better thank you